Hey everyone, thanks for your time. Let's take a look at where NASA and its Artemis partners are in the middle of February 2025. At a high level, the Artemis II SLS launch vehicle is being stacked by Exploration Ground Systems, or EGS, and the Orion spacecraft is nearing handover to EGS for launch processing. Artemis II is an Orion crewed test flight that will circumnavigate the moon. SpaceX and Axiom Space are developing lunar landing and lunar surface spacewalk hardware for the Artemis III lunar landing. And SLS and EGS are assembling and testing hardware for the Block 1B upgrade to the rocket that would fly beginning with the Artemis IV gateway assembly and lunar landing mission. SLS is building the exploration upper stage and EGS is constructing Mobile Launcher 2. Overshadowing possibly all of that is the threat by the new presidential administration to cancel some or all of that and start over from scratch. But let's dig into the details that we can and see where things stand today, at least out here in public. For Artemis II, all the hardware is at the Kennedy Space Center launch site with SLS in launch processing and Orion getting closer to that. EGS is responsible for launch processing and operations at KSC, and until much closer to launch readiness, SLS and Orion work is going on in parallel in separate locations. For the Artemis II SLS, EGS Integrated Operations is putting the pieces together in the vehicle assembly building. The solid rocket boosters are now almost completely stacked on Mobile Launcher 1 in High Bay 3. Once those are finished, the next two elements that need to be stacked are standing by, more or less, inside the VAB. The core stage is set up in High Bay 2, going through some servicing and maintenance, and the launch vehicle stage adapter is parked in High Bay 4. Stepping back, here's the overall sequence in the VAB once stacking begins. First, the SLS boosters and stages are stacked on the mobile launcher. Stacking is just bolting them together. Then all those pieces have to be interconnected, the SLS pieces with each other, and also with the mobile launcher umbilicals. There are connections between the ML and the SRB aft skirts, two umbilical plates to the core stage engine section, one to the inner tank, one to the forward skirt, and one to the interim cryogenic propulsion stage or ICPS. There are also air conditioning lines and a vehicle stabilizer that connects to the forward skirt to damp out motion and forces that ground winds put on the rocket. EGS verifies that all those connections are talking and operating correctly with each other at each interface. At a high level, that's called the Integrated Test and Checkout, or ITCO. That includes interface verification tests and program-specific engineering tests, which range from leak checks to functional testing of the different rocket subsystems. While that integrated functional testing is in work, the vehicle could be prepared for rollout to its launch pad for a tanking test if NASA decides to do one without Orion. That would include breaking down and removing internal access platforms, finishing internal foam closeout work, and finishing the same external closeout work on things like weather seals. For Artemis II, the key to the schedule right now is finishing work to get Orion ready to launch. Right now, Lockheed Martin, the prime contractor for Orion, is finishing up assembly and test of the spacecraft in the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building in the KSC Industrial Area. When that is finished, they will DD-250, or hand over the spacecraft, to Exploration Ground Systems for launch processing. EGS spacecraft and offline operations will move Orion to the multi-payload processing facility first for commodity loading and servicing of those subsystems from propellants to consumables and some outfitting. After that testing is completed, the spacecraft will be powered down again and moved to the launch abort system facility, also in the industrial area, for stacking of the launch abort system and for installing the launch fairings over the crew module. Both the abort tower and the Ojai fairing panels are parts of the LAS. Orion is encapsulated for launch like other payloads. Combined with the abort requirements, the fairing for the crewed spacecraft is more complicated than the more standardized clamshell fairings for uncrewed spacecraft. There are separate fairings for the crew module and the service module, a four-piece ogive-shaped set of panels go over the crew module, and a three-piece set of panels that go around the service module. Generically, the payload fairing is jettisoned after the spacecraft and rocket have exited the lower atmosphere. However, the more complicated fairings for Orion are also jettisoned separately. 
The crew module fairings also serve the same purpose in a Mode 1 launch abort, so they remain with Orion and the LAS until the very end of the LAS functions. And actually, that's the case for nominal launches, where the fairings are carried away with the rest of the LAS when it is jettisoned several seconds after the service module fairings. After the LAS has been installed, the communications between the LAS avionics and the Orion flight control system have been checked out, and internal and external closeouts have been completed, then Orion will be ready to move to the VAB for stacking with SLS. For Artemis 3, development of the systems to land two astronauts on the surface of the moon and then let them explore the surface in the landing area is one driver of the schedule, and production of the other major elements is the other. The Starship HLS element is the most prominent development effort, with flight testing of the foundational systems the highest priority. SpaceX is currently focused on evolving the technology for rapid reusability of the two-stage launch system. They are approaching the ability to put a ship in low Earth orbit and recover that stage, in addition to the initial demonstrations already completed recovering the first stage Super Heavy booster. For Artemis and the HLS lunar lander that NASA contracted, development and maturity of on-orbit propellant transfer is the critical technology. Flight testing of that would come sometime after orbital testing begins. NASA is still saying that propellant transfer demonstrations in low Earth orbit could happen in 2025. That's obviously the big Artemis watch item for Starship. The lunar surface spacewalk suits are being privately developed by Axiom Space. The critical design review was delayed from last year into 2025. That was said to be preceded by a human-in-the-loop vacuum test. Those are the milestones we will continue to wait for. After the CDR is completed, two flight units would need to be assembled and checked out. If CDR happens this year, hopefully we will get an update on when that might happen. The other major elements are Orion and SLS, and the remaining hardware in assembly are the spacecraft crew and service modules and the SLS core stage. Production of those units is following more or less the same sequence of steps as the ones for Artemis II. Right now, those two builds are still short of the point where the major sub-assemblies are joined together. That's what we'll be looking for during 2025. For Orion, we'll be looking for the new Avcoat blocks for the heat shield to be delivered to KSC for bonding to the structural carrier. We'll also be looking for the crew and service modules to be powered up for testing, and then for all of those pieces to be put together, first the heat shield to the crew module, and eventually the crew module to the service module. It's not clear how much of that could happen during 2025. For the SLS core stage, we'll be looking for the lead element, the engine section, to finish outfitting and standalone testing at KSC, and for the other four elements to be put together at the Michoud Assembly facility in New Orleans. Similarly, it's not clear how much of that could happen this year. Due to delays with all the elements from Starship to SLS, Artemis 3 is already out to mid-2027, and beyond that we're probably talking about the next political cycle in 2028. All of this work is underway though, so the outlook for the following mission, Artemis 4, is as follows. The primary schedule driver for Artemis 4 is finishing construction of Mobile Launcher 2 and development of EUS. Assembly of the partially outfitted ML2 structure reached the quote-unquote rig and set milestone at the beginning of the year, with the first umbilical tower module stacked on the launch platform base of the ML. During the year, the expectation is for the remaining umbilical tower modules to be assembled. Testing is also underway for the umbilical arms and connections at KSE's launch equipment and test facility. Those umbilicals will eventually be lifted up onto the umbilical tower and base platform, though maybe not until next year. Development of Exploration Upper Stage is in the assembly and test phase. Both the EUS and Block 1B vehicle as a whole are past their critical design reviews, and the pieces of the structural test article for EUS are beginning to be welded and bolted together. The latest high-level schedule targets were for the STA to be completed at the beginning of 2026, and the first flight article to be completed at the end of 2026. Given that schedule, we should see welding of all the upper stage elements completed during this year, followed by further assembly and possibly some of the final joins of those STA elements. 
In addition to the propellant tanks, the EUS has the mid-body that connects them and adapters that connect the stage to the other parts of the SLS vehicle. Another big schedule driver for Artemis IV is assembly and test of the first three gateway elements. The first two elements, the power and propulsion element and the habitation and logistics outpost, will launch together on a fully expendable Falcon Heavy vehicle. The third element, the International Habitation Module, or IHAB, will launch with Orion and SLS after the co-manifested PPE and HALO modules reach the gateway orbit. The PPE and HALO are currently being assembled and outfitted. Very soon, we should see the HALO structure transported to a U.S. facility of prime contractor Northrop Grumman in the Phoenix area, where most of the outfitting of the module still needs to take place. PPE prime contractor Maxar is building that element in the San Francisco Bay Area, and one of the critical elements are the solar electric propulsion engines, which are being built by other NASA contractors. Those engines or thrusters were supposed to be delivered to Maxar this year for integration with the PPE spacecraft, so that's a big milestone to watch for in 2025. The schedules for the other elements, HALO integration or outfitting, and IHAB assembly and test are a little more nebulous. There is other hardware for SLS, including new connectors and a payload adapter for, in this case, the IHAB module, but those are not expected to be critical path elements. The solid rocket booster motor segments were already almost complete and those will go into storage. The core stage build will be the other SLS watch item. That is still mostly in structural assembly. Structural assembly is approximately the same phase that the Orion spacecraft for Artemis IV is in, with the exception of the European service module, which is farther ahead of the other elements. But as I said at the top, all of these plans are rumored to be in jeopardy, with news stories reporting from inside the Trump administration that cancellation of Artemis programs is being considered and planned for. Although termination of the SLS program has gotten more of the focus of the speculation, the architecture for transporting crews to the moon is pretty tightly coupled around those pre-existing government programs, SLS, Orion, and Gateway. Those existed before the Artemis brand name was introduced in 2019, and both President Trump and Elon Musk have emphasized Mars in the past few months which leads to speculation of a full reset that completely axes the existing Moon to Mars plan. Even if the quote-unquote plan were only to terminate SLS, that by itself would likely delay landing astronauts on the Moon for years beyond the current mid-2027 estimate. And obviously, if Mars becomes the focus, then plans for NASA to return to the Moon would become moot. Eventually, the Trump administration is going to announce what their plans are for the future. Right now, the first question is when we find out. Officially, there has been little or no comment from NASA about its future or the rumored jeopardy that Artemis is in. With the new administration taking power only about a month ago, the full details of its first budget request are typically later than other years. As has been reported, a quote-unquote skinny budget proposal could be released in March, and maybe that is when we find out. But it's also possible for a preemptive announcement before that, like on social media. Whenever we find out what the administration wants to do, then the questions are going to be about whether President Trump and Elon Musk are terminating this program or that, or whether the plan is a full reset. The nominee to be NASA Administrator, Jared Isaacman, will be the person who is asked to execute whatever directives he is given by Trump and Musk. Before he is confirmed by the Senate, there will be a nomination hearing in the Senate's Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation. Chairman of the committee, Senator Ted Cruz, noted last week that they are waiting for some documentation to be completed before they schedule that public hearing. The Senate is still working to finish confirming cabinet positions, so the votes in the committee and on the Senate floor might be some weeks away, and it's possible that Trump and Musk's plans for the future will be announced before Isaacman is sworn into office. Beyond the administration's plans for flying people beyond Earth orbit and their team members, one of the big questions that follows is whether Congress collectively supports a new plan or not. Since the election, the defense of the current plan has been muted or non-existent, so it's hard to tell how much support there is. There will likely be some opposition to changing plans, but the outcome could depend on who has better leverage and or the most votes. 
or maybe it will involve not just the president and Congress, but also the courts. If it comes to the courts, then the question is how far Trump and Musk went to take control of the situation. Will they shut down active work to start the contract buyout process? For example, would they order that the Artemis II vehicle be de-stacked and all preparations suspended? That's one of the things we're staying tuned to find out. Thanks as always for watching. Click on the like button if you found this video informative. It's not a surprise that news about the political rumors is coming out at a faster pace than news about Artemis' work, but we're standing by for updates to both.